Hello and welcome back. Now I want to talk about backgrounds of rhythms, backgrounds of rhythms in Arab music especially. But I also always want to take a reference back to Western rhythms and rhythm in general. I hope you will get some inspiration out of that video. First, there's um, yeah, two concepts of rhythm in Arab music. Rhythm is a very important uh, thing. It plays a huge role and together with form and melody, it's one of the three big parameters that make Arab music as special as it is. So the first concept is the taksim, which we heard before in Fadel's video. A taksim basically doesn't have a constant Uh, cycling pattern, cycling rhythm, but still in the way the soloist is playing and in the rhythmic ideas that uh, he or she is presenting, you can definitely get a feeling for uh, an Arab rhythm concept. The second concept of rhythms is the Ika. Ika is the word for rhythm. In Turkish it would be Uzun. I will stick with Uh, Ika. Ika comes from the word waka, which means to fall. So basically it's about beats falling into place, which I find super interesting because it already has a, a kind of motion inside. And motion is what rhythms are more or less made of and what give them a certain kind of phrasing also, which I will come back to later. So first is to say that the variety of ikat in uh, the Arab music culture is very large. Um, that's due to the geographical size of the Arab area. In the west we have North Africa. In the north we have the um, former Ottoman Empire, which is Turkey now. In the east we have the Persian Empire, which is Iran today. Um, in The North African countries, we find rhythms like, we find a certain kind of um, rhythm that is uh, in Gnawa music. Gnawa music came from the Berber over the Sahara um, to North Africa. In Turkey, we find, uh, for example, Aksak or Cifteteli, and in the Persian area, we find uh, rhythms like Nawakt or Koshrang. On top of that, um, during the um, time between 711 and 1492, the Iberian Peninsula was uh, ruled by Muslims. Um, that area was called Al-Andalus, and this time, this period, was called the Golden Age for Arab music because um, the uh, different genres of Arab music really developed during this time. For example, the Mwasha genre that uh, Fadel will talk a bit later about. Okay, so what are rhythms made of? Basically, it's just two different kinds of beats, which are downbeats and upbeats. Downbeats on the drum set would be uh, low, longer notes, uh, which would be the kick drum, the bass drum. Um, upbeats would be played mostly and in a very simplistic way on the snare drum. In the Arab music, we have kind of the same concept. We have down and upbeats, <coughs> and they are called dum and tak. So dum on a bendir would be played here, and tak is a higher note. Um, which is more on the edge of the drum. So this already sounds like dum and tak. Um, in the Western music, we are, like, tend to be more used to a sy symmetrical order of downs and upbeats. Like in a very simple 4-4 four, four measure, it would be like that. So that's also what a drum student would learn in the first lesson, probably. Um, in the Arab music, we 
also have a lot of like symmetrical meters, but the symmetrical order of down and up beats is a little bit broken. Um, so I will now show you um, a PDF, which is called R Rhythm West to East. In this PDF, I will show you a transition uh, from a very symmetrical straight 4-4 four, four groove, and I will always change one parameter, either in instrumentation or in the place where the up or down beat falls. And with time, we will end up in an unsymmetrical meter with an unsymmetrical position of all the beats. So yeah, let's get it on. Still pretty western. Now I change something. So just the switch of the first upbeat to the one end instead of the two already brings a certain feeling of yeah, something that we are not certainly used to. So it yeah, pushes kind of the beat um, pretty soon. Some instrumentation change. Okay, so we're already in a different Ika now as we were before. Before, before we heard Saidi and now we heard Maksum. So by just changing the instrumentation. From Maksum, we will go to Navari and then to Belladine. Maksum. Okay, again, just very few things changed. Now, from Belody, we have a short transformation, and then we leave one beat away and find ourselves in Davri Hindi, which is a 7 8 bar. First, Belody. Transformation. Beat away. Yeah, that's basically it. We will hear more about the Davra Hindi and about odd meters in the videos later. Odd meters are find themselves mainly in uh, classical Arab music, in the pop and folk music. It's mostly like straight meters. Um, the Mwasha genre is one genre, one type of music where you can see pretty easily how the rhythms themselves developed and Father will now give us an insight how this works. Um, <clears throat> so now we, we move from <clears throat> From Andalusia to the to the pre-Islamic period in in the Arabic Peninsula, which is Saudi Arabia for now, and in that time uh, there was um, uh, a huge market which uh, is organized once per year, like whole month, uh, and the 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 most important goods that are sold in this market are like uh, statues of gods. Uh, because in, in the Arabic Peninsula there's this Kaaba. This Kaaba is this uh, black, huge cube where Muslims go uh, for some religious uh, practices. And um, around this, this uh, market there was uh, also like competitions about poetry. And at the time poetry was a vocal performance basically, so we don't read uh, poetry, we sing poetry. And from this uh, poetry that uh, people were singing, uh, first we got the essence of the main maqams, 
like in a natural way. Uh, and afterwards, we extracted like 24 main rhythms of the poetry itself. So there should be an uh, uh, in interior rhythm for, for each poetry. For example, in the PDF you will find attached uh, to this uh, video, you will find um, uh, like uh, a, a cutting in syllables for uh, two examples of Arabic poetry, of course, uh, written uh, in, in Latin letters also, then you can understand. <clears throat> and the principle is too simple. We just uh, make a, a difference between long syllables and uh, short syllables. So when you read the PDF, uh, I, I try to, 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 to say it in Arabic as slow as I can, then you get the thing. So the first example is so two long ones, li, a short one, tal, a long one, ati, uh, two uh, short ones, and so on and so on. You can you can see the rest uh, in, in in the PDF. Um, and uh, there's a root uh, like a, a succession of long and short syllables that is repeated inside of the uh, of the of the verse. So this is like the first seed of the inside rhythm of the poetry, and it was helpful to compose stuff afterwards. Uh, and there's also an example of Amwasha. Amwasha has a vocal uh, form uh, in which we have a 10 8, like, exactly like the rhythm of uh, the Samai form, but a 10 8 with an off beat. And this off beat is quite interesting because it, uh, it has a function inside of the. Inside of the um, I think we, we got a bit. On the left side. It's on the left side. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this Moasha uh, is on 10-8, uh, on the rhythm of Samai, and uh, it has always an offbeat, and this offbeat is super important. I would play the melody, and bit by bit we will explore the importance of this upbeat. It's in B-flat major, which is, which is the maqam ajam on B-flat. So. The melody is one. At the beginning, one. This offbeat is basically establishing the, the the root of the of the whole scale. Super important. It's repeated for house one and for house two. It's the other way around. Instead of having uh, G A, it's it's B flat A going down to to G. So we are going to the uh, relative minor, which is G minor to uh, make a variation inside of the melody. Of course, there's uh, a video uh, of uh, a performance around uh, this muasha, and also uh, the full link if you want to see like the whole vocal suite for people who want to go deeper with that. Monsieur yeah. Thank you. Bidi. Um, yeah, now let's get to the third point, which is instrumentation. Instrumentation and arranging in Arab music also definitely forms the um, rhythm that we can hear. So if we compare it to the polyphony in Western music, we have their artfully woven structures together. Um, but in the end, the rhythm of each phrase 
kind of gets weakened up or less strong compared to the Arab music where we mostly have monophony or heterophony. That means that we have the same basis, but every musician plays around that basis with some ornaments. So this makes the basic idea super strong. Same in the percussion section, the same ika, but every instrumentalist um, plays some ornamentations on the different instruments. Each instrument has a different way of ornamentation, so we get a very moving rhythmic structure, which still is always connected to the basis, which makes the rhythm so strong. We can um, compare this concept somehow to the marching bands in the early New Orleans um, jazz time, where everybody was playing around the same melody, but yeah, kind of improvising around this idea. I was mentioning before that um, Ika comes from Waka, which means fall, so motion makes a big um, uh, is a very important um, idea of rhythm itself, which brings us to the last point, which is phrasing. Phrasing is a um, thing that is happening in folklore all over the world. So, for example, we have it in the samba tradition in Brazil, we have it in Bavarian folk music, and we have it in the uh, Gnawa music in North Africa. I will now play two examples. One is Bavarian folk music and the second is Gnawa music. <laughs> That's already enough. We see that there is not a straight um, subdivision. It's not but it's yeah more moving. Same in the Gnawa music. Same here. Um, it's not from a straight 16th note, um, but it's somewhere in between 16th notes, quintuplets. You cannot really tell. You also cannot really write it down. That's due to the like the hundreds of years of oral transmission, um, where it wasn't written down, but it was told from a teacher to a student or from a group to a new member. We also know this from swing, where we have a certain phrasing on the right symbol or in the eighth notes of a soloist. It didn't really come by accident that uh, in Gnawa music and in swing, in jazz, we have also, kind of similar feeling in Tunisia, we find music that is super swingy in a way. Um, I already said that the Berber brought some uh, music tradition from the West African states. Um, the same was with, as we all know, the slaves um, coming from West Africa and that were brought to North America and with them a jazz vibe um, was developed. We heard in the example I showed you, in the Gnawa example, those nice small instruments, which normally are almost double size, but those are much easier to carry, so I have them. Um, playing those instruments is a lot about the motion, um, and that's also why this rhythm is so rolling, especially. Um, um, where we find this is a lot in the Sufi tradition. Sufi tradition is also a lot about the dervish dances where the dancers turn and turn and turn and it's a thing that is going for, for a very long time and kind of being 
steady but always moving. <coughs> and that's about um, the idea of getting into a state called trance. So what we'll do now is play a piece of Fadel called Trans Station, which is about exactly that idea. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. 